Dugongs and Sita from Sri Lanka. Over the tranquil sea of the Gulf of Manar, the morning breeze blew fresh. The blue unruffled sheet stretched the low horizon where it met the vast immensity of the pastel sky, with its soft cloud masses as motionless as in a picture. It was a scene of breathless beauty, a glory of the firmament that whispered to the heart of man. These are the words of the late Dr. Richard Spittle, Sri Lankan's renowned wildlife conservationist and anthropologist, who once described the Gulf of Manar, a unique corner of the Indian Ocean nestling between northern Sri Lanka and the southeastern tip of India. The tropical sheltered waters provide a highly desirable habitat for a number of marine creatures making it one of the richest coastal regions in Asia. In addition to the numerous species of fish, the habitat includes sharks and stingrays, turtles and an array of dolphins and whales. There is also the intriguing, myth-laden and highly endangered dugong, also known as the sea cow. It is said that they landed there as companions of Sita when she was held captive in Lanka. The story continues as so. During their exile in the forest, Rama helped defend the wise men living there against the evil Rakshasas. The hideous giantess Suparnaka offered to marry both Rama and Lakshmana. Stalking them, she pestered Lakshmana, who out of a fit of rage picked his arrow and cut her nose. In deep shock, she ran to her brother, the mighty king of Lanka, Ravana. She cried her woes to him, distressed that she was rebuked and her nose cut by Lakshmana. King Ravana vowed to avenge his sister's humiliation, so he went to see the perpetrators in the forest. He ordered one of his assistants, Marich, to transform himself into a golden deer and lure Sita, Rama's wife. The latter, subdued by this most beautiful shining golden deer, asked her husband to catch it for her. Rama could not refuse his wife, so he went on the track of the golden deer. He assigned his brother Lakshmana to guard their hut and Sita. Suddenly, they heard a cry of distress. Help! Lakshmana, help me! They both became very worried that something might have happened to Rama. So Sita prompted Lakshmana to go to his brother's rescue at once. Lakshmana cautiously drew a line around Sita to protect her from any harm. So he went to look for Rama. In the meantime, King Ravana had been watching the scene, hiding behind the bushes. He transformed himself into a monk and went to seek for alms at the hut. May I get some food, please? Sita came out of the hut bringing some rice and fruits to offer to the monk. But the latter asked that she put them in his bowl, instead of handing them over in a corner. I am sorry, but I am not allowed to cross this line. Can you come and take them, please? Hearing this, the monk grew angry and told her that he felt humiliated by such an act. How can you be so arrogant? I'm an old monk. Instead of you bowing at my feet, you are asking me to come to you. You deserve to be cursed. I shall throw a bad curse on you and your family. Sita got frightened and implored. Please do forgive my impertinent behaviour. Do not curse us. I shall come and give you the arms in your bowl. Saying so, the young woman crossed the line, protecting her, and advanced towards King Ravana in disguise. Little did she know that she was facing one of the mightiest kings ever to have existed, blessed by Lord Shiva himself. He received the boon of eternal life, as no one could kill him. The Lord of Death, Yam, was not allowed to go close to him. In a swift movement, he grabbed Sita by the hand and pulled her onto his golden chariot, which suddenly materialized on the spot. By then, he had also revealed himself in his real form. 
Sita was scared and shouted for help, but there was no one who could hear her in this dense and isolated forest. At the same time, Jatayu, a giant bird flying by, heard her cries. He darted to the chariot up in the sky, beating his wings in urgency. Upon reaching the chariot, he dived to King Ravana, squeaking, Sita Mata, Sita Mata, I am Jatayu, Lord Rama's friend. Can you hop on my back? Sita struggled to disengage her hand from King Ravana's grip and made a bid to hop in the air, hoping she would fall on Jatayu's back. Alas, in a flash, the king drew his sword and chopped off the giant bird's wing. The latter, fatally wounded, fell from the air to the ground, and King Ravana flew away to Lanka with Sita. While crossing over rivers, hills, plains, meadows, habitations, Sita was still crying for help. Someone please help me. This man is abducting me. Please, please help me. There was no one who could reach this high in the sky to her. However, Sita, being born from Mother Earth, called for help from her. Mother, Mother, where are you? Please help me. Mother Earth, hearing her daughter's distressed calls, called upon to her animals. Among them, the cows responded the fastest. Mother Earth, don't worry, we are going to her rescue. So Sita's wails and protests were heard by some cattle grazing on the Panyan coast bordering the sea. Looking up, the cattle saw the plight of Sita, the divine daughter of Mother Earth. Without a second thought, they followed the chariot across the sea. When King Ravana's chariot flew over Manar to cross to Lanka, the cows barred his way making a chain. He swiftly used one of his powers and broke through the barrier. They all plunged in free fall to the ocean. Not being swimmers, they would drown. Taking pity on them, Sita prayed to Varuna, the lord of the sea, to protect them and threw down the flowers that adorned her, which upon reaching the depths turned into sea grass, taking root and ultimately helped to sustain them. A powerful demon rose to eat them. Lord Varuna locked the cows into a protective shield. The cattle managed to escape the guardian demon of the deep, Sinhika. Unable to proceed further and unwilling to abandon Sita, the cattle remained in the sea. The sea grass which grew from Sita's flowers provided them with food. They told Mother Earth that they would not leave Sita Mata until she is rescued. So they were content to be changed by the sea god into sea cows, dugongs. One day, during her solitary moments as a captive, Sita took a walk alongside the walls of the palace garden. When she heard shrill calls, she looked everywhere and she could not see anyone. Then came a voice. Sita Mata, Sita Mata, I am Vali, a cow now living in the sea, and I am here with all my sisters and friends. We are here to keep you company. Mother Earth sent us to your rescue. Sadly, we couldn't do anything. How are you, anyway? I miss my husband, Rama, and Lakshman, my brother-in-law. Sita replied. Sita Mata, is there anything I can do for you now? If only I could send a message to my husband, sighed Sita. Vali took it to herself to transmit the message to her sister. And they all unanimously said, Hanuman, he is the only one who can fly higher than anyone. He can fly to Sita Mata and find Rama in the forest. Let's call him. So they came to the surface and called in their shrill voices. Hanuman could hear anything from anywhere. So he came and hovered over where the calls originated. Who goes there? Who goes there and why are you calling me? The sea cows came to the surface. It is us, the cows. Cows in the sea? I've never seen that. Why are you here? 
They told him about the story and how they landed in the sea. Hanuman, upon hearing of the abduction of Sita, was alerted. Sita Mata, did you say? Sita Mata of my dear Lord Rama? He was heartbroken. The sea cows asked him to fly to the palace and search for Sita Mata. He did that and met with her. Following this, he went to find Rama and soon they raised an army to walk to Lanka. Rama, upon seeing the ocean which separated Lanka from where they were, became worried. Hanuman called upon his army and went to the shore. Dear sea cows, where are you? We need your help. The sea cows came to the surface. Yes, Hanuman, how can we help you? We need to cross the ocean to reach Lanka. We need to build a bridge. But we have not much time for that. Valli, the sea cow said. Bring a rock and throw it in the water. Take the name of Lord Rama and we shall do the rest. So the Vanar Sena of Hanuman lined up and started throwing big rocks in the ocean. The sea cows held them afloat, making a bridge. Soon Rama, Hanuman and the army could cross to Lanka. King Ravana did not accept the peaceful return of Sita. So a bitter battle ensued upon which King Ravana was killed. Sita was rescued and she returned home with her husband Rama. The sea cows remained where they were. Sita, upon leaving, bid them goodbye and said, Thank you, my dear friends. I shall never forget your support and affection. Are you sure you want to stay here? Yes, we cannot return to the land now as Lord Varuna's spell cannot be reversed, but we are happy that you are safe now. Don't worry about us. We have plenty of food and we shall survive. In that case, may you live happily and as cows. You shall have milk for your young ones and eat grass, just like when you were on land. People will see in you the most alluring creatures to grace the sea. Thank you, Sita Mata. Goodbye. The sea cows, also called the dugongs, lived happily in the ocean, populating many shores across the world. They were blessed into the shape of a woman like Sita and endowed with teeth which allowed them to feed their young ones with milk. They lived entirely on sea grass and remained as docile as cows are. Many sailors who caught sight of them thought they were ethereal creatures and were spellbound by their grace and beauty. Later, they also came to be known as mermaids.